Hello, all you wonderful people. It is Odin, your friendly neighborhood Odin. Uh, drawing and uh, making videos. It's been a little while since I made one. I made a video earlier today uh, to announce to the world uh, the union, the coming together of Unconditional Shove to the world of Broken Compass Comics. Uh, very excited, and that was uh, fun, and you can check that out. It'll never be on my channel. It's just uh, purely for the Broken Compass Comics channel. Which, if you put in Broken Compass Comics, it's almost a tongue twister. It's like Peter Pepper picked a peck of pickle. Broken Compass Comics. Yeah. Um, if you type that in, you can find it, but I'll, so I'll put a link in the description later, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. And also talked a lot about Unconditional Shove and where we are at with that and uh, the exciting news going forward with Unconditional Shove. Uh, at the moment, though, I am taking a hiatus, a little bit of a break from some of the Unconditional Shove work to work on something else. But before I talk about that, I will show the last, well, two pages. We'll show the last two. So I shared this one on all social media and whatnot, but um, I said that was the last page I'm going to share, but I'm going to share one more just for the halibut, of course. Um, we're getting near the end, and there's that one. Please, this one. A whole lot of uh, other things are going on now, and yeah. Exciting times in the this story, which uh, the other pages, all the pages are penciled, including a transition page leading to uh, the next story, but uh, they just need inked, and there's, uh, let's see, one, two, three, including the transition page that need inked, and yeah, and then it's on to the next story, on, on, on to the next one, so there's that. Uh, right now I am working on something. You know, I don't know much about this. I was asked, and I don't even know if I'm supposed to say anything. I guess if somebody yells at me for saying something about it, heh, no one told me. Uh, I was asked to write a write and draw a six-page public domain story. And I said, well, that sounds like fun. I can handle six pages take some time off of unconditional shove and do six pages. So I picked for my public domain character Cole of Atlantis or Cole the Conqueror as most people know him. Uh, basically he was the precursor to Conan so in a lot of ways basically he's a introspective Conan. <laughs> um, and there was a great story and um, that, this is a Robert Howard character if you don't know who created Conan. There's a great story called The Mirror of Tuzanthun. And I am doing an adaptation of that in poetic meter. So all of the narration and dialogue for the most part is going to be a poem about Cole's encounter with the wizard Tuzanthun and his House of Mirrors. Great story. Fun. And I'll be excited for that. So I'm drawing page one out of six. And there was my thumbnail for it. So that's what I did really quick at work to go, oh, this is what I'm going to do. And I changed it up. Of course, this was the ship. And now it's down here. And now this scene here is going to go right in this area. So, we be drawing on that while we talk. I have um, some very cheap whiskey, but I was out of beer. Well, I had a couple, but uh, I decided to go whiskey then. Usually I don't put my cheap beer on ice, or cheap whiskey on ice like that. Usually I mix it with a beer and make a boiler maker, but that's what we're doing tonight. So yeah, but I am uh, pretty stoked about what's coming down the pipe with Unconditional Shove 
and the Broken Compass comics. All of it is going to be just badass, and the future is bright, and it's just going to get more and more ramped up as things go. So we got to draw a serpent character. So he, um, oh, I think it's Shadow Kingdom. I think that's what it's called. Where uh, Cole found out when he went to visit another kingdom, the kingdom of the Picts, that it was entirely run by a secret society of an ancient race of serpent people. I mean, isn't that cool? Sounds like something Alex Jones would come up with. <laughs> Turn the frickin' frogs gay! Yeah. So, this part of this page is uh, old man Cole here at the top kind of looking like Odin a little bit naturally like not this Odin but the, the deity Odin um, and that's why I gave him a pirate viking ship not pirate ship but he was a pirate so in this old man uh, contemplation he's remembering his adventures as he's puzzled with basically what is life, what is this life that he's living and uh, as he ponders these things in deep poetry he's also pondering his encounter with Tuzanthun um, but he's encountering all these or recounting all these adventures he had uh, one of which was with some serpent people and another great story like I said Cole was cool he was uh, basically like Conan Light in a lot of ways um, a little less adventurous a little he wasn't a womanizer he hardly had any interest in women anyway as far as it shows not that he was gay or something, but <laughs> but um, he wasn't like Conan, like all about the pussy. <laughs> Conan was not all about the pussy, but when it came around, he was all you know sure to jump on it. Um, but he was a more contemplative character, much more uh, philosophical, whereas Conan was a little more impetuous now they're both brave both impetuous at times but um, Cole like I said he just had a little more of this philosophical deep thinker kind of vibe whereas Conan had much more of an action get her done kind of vibe so which makes it interesting you know to like both you know obviously I, Conan was said it many times he was my favorite um, fictional character growing up um but Cole is I mean he's pretty hard to argue with especially because they are very similar I mean they have similar things going on they both became kings they both had all kinds of uh adventures and whatnot and I think the creation of Conan came from the original first Conan story came from a failed Cole story, if I remember correctly. Like, the publisher rejected it, so he changes it slightly and changed the name to Conan. The rest is history. That's what I read somewhere. Who knows if it's true. Some big Robert Howard historian would probably know if that was true. <laughs> Whereas I love Conan, and I'm a big fan, but I'm never, like, the biggest fan of something. Even my favorite things. I Well, I mean, it's like anything. You know there's somebody out there who's a bigger fan. So. That might be a tad big. We'll see. We just have to throw them really close. So this one is going to be a full bleed page. So I can go. But I don't want to get cut off on anything important. So you just got to make sure as you get to the edge that you're not 
cutting yourself off. Even though you do have to draw to the edge, just make sure nothing important out on the edge. But I like to live dangerously. So, yeah. Let's see here. So, yeah, when I'm doing pencils, it's pretty, pretty sketchy. And I mean, a lot of people start out that way, but. Um, I have a relative idea of what I'm going to do. And you're just kind of getting shapes and figures. So let's see, he's got a cloak and he's going to be grabbing Somebody there, his forearm, shoulder meets, bicep meets, forearm. Draw these nice wing lats. You know. Any guy who worked hard back then is gonna have some wings. The chest. Ribs. Abs. Seven minute abs. Which may all get covered up. I don't know. Oftentimes these guys are depicted shirtless. But people get all weird about it. Yeah, and actually, if he was a warrior, he'd probably be wearing chain mail or at least clothes. You know, like whatever. I just wanted to look cool. Had this discussion with um, uh, the creator of Arachna Comics. Um... <laughs> Or not, not the arachna. Well, he created arachna. But anyway, talking about the female form, or the human form, not the female form. Or not just the female form. The human form and how comic books are basically accentuating that. We're basically, even if it's like superhero, you're drawing naked people, basically. <laughs> but you're t that's why they have to be well-shaped and, um, and sexy. You know, you're drawing them more or less naked. So, even the, the barbarian guys, and you get somebody going, well, actually, they would not be wearing that. It's like, so what? <laughs> we want it to look cool. I mean, believability is of relative importance. I mean, you don't want it to be just totally absurd, but... It's, to me, it's secondary to looking cool. Which some people might hate that, but that's how I look at it. I don't care. I'm unapologetically uh, more interested in aesthetic than, um, you know, because I, I see a, a lot of it as escapism. So why should I want it to be ultra real? The whole point is we're drawing things that aren't real. You know, even this character that Robert Howard created, it's in a fictitious world. Yes, he based a lot of his stuff on real things, and even some of his naming conventions were real places, real, um, you know, real people, real everything. But still, we're talking about Wizards and warriors, you know? Talking about magic, you're talking about um, lots of things that just aren't real. So, we don't have to worry about too much element of realism. You know, some is important, but 
it's not the end all be all. So I don't like this face. We will start over with that. Let me say neck. He's gonna be leaning back a little bit, but not like I had him. Get like a rough shape of the face, but it, the shape the shape is gonna change. There's no doubt about it. See, so bring that cheekbone down. Find the jaw a little bit more. I like that. And his hair. I mean, he's always kind of depicted with Conan hair, which I don't know. And kind of the bangs and the almost mullet. Which I guess we could do. So he was a king at this time, so I guess I should give him the damn crown. Should I have the bangs coming out? Let's see. I can't remember how they drew Conan or Cole with the, the crown, if they had the bangs coming out the bottom or not. But he was a younger king than what I drew here. That is for sure. We'll give him the same crown for consistency's sake. Guy's gonna be kind of being pulled in. So, what I'm gonna have to do when you're drawing kind of like a bunch of mixed pictures all. Uh, together like this. So do I want to keep that or do I want to... No. Got some issues there so we're going to have to change the direction of the forearm to get it out of the way of this guy's face.
There we go. Sometimes looking at it on the screen instead of down here makes a difference. Other times I've got a mirror over here, so sometimes I do this. And that gives me an idea. And then so basically up here we're going to write Cole. Come up with some cool font but, or some lettering that I like. messing around there. Cool. You guys get, probably can't even see that. Darken some of it in. We could go of at Lantis. So it's going to take some interesting maneuvering, which I think, actually now that I think about it, I might do like I did on my first page of Unconditional Shove, and just do a scroll on every page, because I basically am planning to do every page like this. No panels, just a montage, a panorama, whatever you call it, no, no not panorama, a collage of... Uh, images that tell the story rather than panels because a lot of it is him being an old man reflecting on something that happened so it's kind of memories and dreamlike you know and yeah so I think if I did like a, a scroll here maybe I have to get it further out I don't want to cover up his boot We'll do this. Scroll here. I still don't know if that's enough to fit all the the words that are supposed to be there. to go higher up, let's see. Cover up some of this. And in this phase, I mean, it's just pencils, so it's like, still coming up with a composition of the page, obviously. on your guys end <laughs> not that it looks amazing here but I know what I'm doing as far as like what I'm laying out so it does make a difference something like that it's a 10 line poem for each page. So we'll have words, words, words there. And 
and then this will say Coal of Atlantis, and then somewhere it'll say Mirror of Tuzanthun, or the Mirrors. I think it's the Mirrors of Tuzanthun. Anyway, that's what we're working on. Page one of six. It'll be fun. Uh, a break, a, diff a style change too, so that's always fun. Uh, I've always loved drawing sword and sorcery type things. Uh, it's what I cut my teeth on for a long time. Pretty much just wanted to make Conan books or something like that. So, so this will be fun. Uh, again, I don't know much about the project. Uh, I just know it's going to be a collection and lots, lots of people doing uh, interpretations of public domain characters. Um, so yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, I could even, this'll be fun actually. Let's do this. <laughs> because I have two pages of poetry that I've written for this story. So I could read you the first one as you look at this. <clears throat> Let's get my voice good here. Coal of Atlantis, an adaptation of the mirrors of Tuzanthun. Who in this age has earned the mantle of worthiness more, of crown of throne of rule, of grand historical lore? Yet royalty haunted and halted, captive to sullen mood, where never before hath fear held bridle o'er his fortitude. <laughs> this is hard, so I wrote it so horribly. Well, not necessarily horribly, but crazily. That's a better way to put it. Let's try again. Who in this age has earned the mantle of worthiness more, of crown of throne of... <laughs> Who in this age has earned the mantle of worthiness more, of crown of throne of rule, of grand historical lore? Yet royalty haunted and halted, captive to sullen mood, where ne'er before hath fear held bridle or bridle o'er his fortitude. <laughs> Once a tiger child, even the seas of Atlantis could not drown, now frozen within his thought, by rumination ever bound. Once galley slave, once outlaw, once gladiator, once pirate, once general and commander, once slayer of men but serpent. Yet today he sits a shell, lest the man battle attuned, since fate directed his gaze upon the mirrors of Tuzanthun. That's the poem for page one. And since I'm already doing it, we'll just do page two. Gem and diadem at one time blazed glory from his throne, yet royal shine now dimmed by shadow of questions still unknown. Deep in his moment of weary ponder, the great king gave ear. To Zanthun, said a servant girl, in the house of a thousand mirrors. Near the lake of visions, the wizard has answers there for thee. Of life and death, the stars, the sky, the lands beneath the seas. With haste, the king traveled toward the wizard of which she spoke. Through open door, he entered a house of mirrors and of smoke. Unannounced yet expected, the master wizard invoked the king. Worlds, uh, words that haunt him still. Gaze into my mirrors, what see ye? That would be page two. So I am actually going to ask before I upload this. What's the story on this? Can I talk about it? Because I don't know. Um, like I said, I don't know much about it. Oh, my hair's driving me crazy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know much about it, but um, uh, I'm all I know is I'm excited to do it. It'll be fun. So that's all I got for today. I'm gonna work on this a little more. It is kind of late. I probably should go to bed, but I just don't do that very well sometimes. So <laughs> I'll stay up and draw when I got when I got the hankering. Uh, I can't wait to ink this. That's when it's really going to get fun. So, Anyway, this is Odin. Until next time, get excited about the release of Unconditional Shove. Sign-up pages are coming soon. And the launch. Oh, the great launch. We're looking at October. Looking at Halloween time to launch this book. It's going to be so awesome. 
So, in the meantime, though, go and back, Magnificent Bastards, if you have not already. I'm almost, I would say, 99.99% positive you are not going to be disappointed. Uh, everything about it looks fun and amazing. It's going to be great, wild, wild ride. And uh, every time James shares something with me about it, I get that much more excited. So, so yes, go back, Magnificent Bastards. Stay tuned for more updates on Unconditional Shove and uh, whatever uh, this book is that I'm uh, presently working on. Uh, it sounds like a cool idea and it'll be fun. So, Anyway, until next time, as always, I hope you're doing awesome and uh, pure awesome. Totally kick-ass and just uh, hope everything's going great. This is Odin. We'll talk to you next time.